Last April, troops and tanks of the Israeli army attacked Ramallah and other towns in occupied Palestine. This was reported as an incursion to stop terrorism. In fact, it was also an attack on civilian life, on schools, offices, clinics, theatres, radio stations. This systematic vandalism is typical of one of the longest military occupations in modern times. Even the culture ministry was destroyed. The director, Liana Badri, a distinguished novelist and filmmaker, showed me the devastation shortly after it had happened. This is the administration room. We had a lot of files here. Yeah. You can see that everything was broken. It was the best place in yeah. the ministry. I mean, what you did here was promote projects for Palestinian culture, basically. Filmmaking, projects for children. Uh, exhibitions, uh, book exhibitions, uh, painters exhibitions, uh, uh, festivals, uh, dance, uh, folklore. Uh, we had a lot of so projects. Now we don't have anything to begin. We don't have computers, equipment, furniture, and we have this feeling of humiliation. The smell is awful, isn't it? Look the at smell this. Smell is awful. Yes. This is a this is a bag of shit, and there's shit smeared all over the photocopier. Two. Two. Two uh, so they just ate and and, bags and of defecated shit, yes. in the same place. Yes, and uh, putting them on the photocopy putting the shit everywhere, even on the walls. And you can see that we have toilet, two toilets in every floor, but they didn't use the toilet. All the time they were making it on the floor or anywhere, as you can see. We have yes. a look in this room in here. Good grief. Look at this. These are children's drawings, aren't they? Yes. This is the room specialized for children's uh, work, children's uh, uh, paintings and children's culture, and to encourage yeah. them to paint, to let them express themselves, to make competition, uh, writing competitions. Uh, but you can see how they destroyed everything. They don't respect anything. They just want to come and destroy. And this is the systematic terrorism of the Israeli state. For the Palestinians, this cultural vandalism means a deliberate intention to destroy them as a nation. The heart of the conflict here is a struggle for land, for the hills and valleys of Palestine, for precious water and fertile soil. During the early 20th century, the great majority of the population of Palestine were Palestinian Arabs. In 1948, Israel was founded in the shadow of the Holocaust. For the Palestinians, this meant the loss of 78% of their country. Today, they are seeking only the remaining 22% of their homeland. For 35 years, that homeland has been dominated by Israel. In 1987, the Palestinians rose up in what they call Intifada. History will surely call it a war of national liberation. They fought mainly with slingshots against tanks and planes, and they were put down with this kind of brutality. Israeli soldiers deliberately breaking the bones of prisoners. Some of the soldiers later insisted they were carrying out official Israeli policy. Two years ago, the Palestinians rose up a second time. This was hardly surprising. During curfews, people live under a form of house arrest. Without notice, they can be locked inside their homes. Their ordinary lives are a maze of controls, roadblocks, checkpoints. This is how I remembered apartheid South Africa, 
the hidden effect is the same, humiliation and anger and death. This Palestinian woman knows how devastating the impact of checkpoints can be. Last October, she was about to give birth to her second child, and she and her husband set out for the nearby hospital. They were stopped at an Israeli roadblock where they pleaded to be let through. <laughs> Stories like Fatima's seldom make headlines, and yet many similar cases have been documented. Palestinians try to lead a normal life, but life is never normal. During Israeli military operations, curfews stop everything. Ambulances are denied access to the sick and wounded. Children are stopped from going to school. The Israelis claim this is necessary for their security. If that's true, it's clearly not working. And the security of Palestinians is almost never mentioned. You feel all your life that you are humiliated. You don't control yourself. You don't control the air you are breathing. You don't. I don't want, I don't want to talk about planning for anything. This is something we don't even dream about. Plan to next hour or next day what we will do. This is something we don't even dream about because our destiny is not in our hands. It's, it's in the hands of the others who decide how we will live how we will get married, to get married, to come and live with my husband in this country. I had to take the permission of the Israelis.